Well, I think I think I'd prefer to get the first pick, uh, just because I think Carl Anthony Towns has separated himself that much. But if you're asking me two or three, I would rather get the five and the six than end up at the second pick. So yeah, I think that would be a really good outcome. Uh, there are a lot of guys in that range that I like, and getting two of them would I think really be a good uh, you know good outcome for the Sixers rebuild. So you would rather have five and six rather than get Okafor and De- or D'Angelo Russell. Correct. Yep. Why? Why is that? I mean, I, who are some guys in the five and six spot that you really like and think would be uh, good fits for this team? But would those two guys, I guess, would provide more impact than either Okafor or Russell or Moutier? I think I think with uh, with Okafor, he just you know I think he's a, a really good prospect. I haven't rated as the second best prospect. I just think he doesn't fit with Embiid, um, and I think there are enough guys close enough to him in talent level. Uh, where you know you worry about fit just a little bit, um, you know. So I didn't have so much confidence in Embiid, the player, then I would probably rather have the second pick. Uh, but you know, there's a lot of guys that I think going to be at five and six. One of them just said Moutier. I think he has a chance to be there. Justice Winslow, I think, would be a really good piece to add. Uh, so would Mario Hazonia. So if you can end up getting, you know, two of those three guys, I think you're in a really good spot. Um, you know, I, I I think Hazonia, for example, I think he's on a tier with D'Angelo Russell as a prospect. So if you can get him and another really good player, then I think you'd come out ahead. Derek, so many times at the NFL Combine, we start to hear about guys moving up and moving down. Are there guys that are already kind of stepping up and catching people's eyes that are making moves uh, from where they were at the beginning of this process? Yeah, well, I think uh, you know, I think one of the interesting names um, was a guy called George Lucas de Paula. Uh, he's a real young 18-year-old kid in, in Brazil and playing in the lower levels of Brazil. Uh, and he came in here and he measured out with what, to my, uh, to my knowledge, is the longest wingspan of any point guard in hmm. combine history. Uh, so he has a lot of defensive tools. He looks like still he's still a young kid, but he looks like he has some talent. Uh, he sh- can shoot a little bit. Uh, he can pass. And, and just he looks like he has a lot that you can mold. So I think a lot of people are seeing him for the first time, and I think he's an interesting name because of that defensive potential. Um, you know, Rashawn Holmes, he's kind of in a similar situation. He's a four-year player, but he was, you know, he was playing at Bowling Green, so there's a little bit of obscurity. And a lot of guys just maybe their first, or, or maybe their second or third time, really seeing him. And he's just, you know, a six foot ten athlete can block a lot of shots. And I think he's starting to move up draft boards as well. Um, you know, I think one of the guys here who's kind of a, a reclamation project is Cliff Alexander. Uh, he went to Kansas, um, had a lot of expectations, was really highly recruited, and struggled for much of the season. You know, but he came here. Uh, he's he's big, strong. Um, and really athletic, and I think he's starting to show that here. And you know, hopefully, maybe he can build up some of that stock back up to where it once was, uh, because he had a tough season at Kansas, and then he uh, he eventually was ruled ineligible um, because of benefits. Uh, his I forget exactly what it was, something around uh, a loan for his mother that she took out. So he's a guy who maybe could reclaim some of that draft stock. Um, a lot of the top tier guys aren't playing, obviously, uh, and you know, some of them didn't even show up to get measured. So those guys aren't moving so much. Uh, but some of those, you know, late first, early second round guys is where you're seeing movement. Yeah, and you know, the Sixers have been interviewing a couple of guys, mostly second round guys, but it seems like a lot of attention on D'Angelo Russell. And do you believe that that is the guy the Sixers are really targeting? You know, that that guy is a great fit for them and that that's the guy they, you know, other than getting maybe number one and, and picking Towns, do you think they take Towns because they have to at number one or do they really want to take Russell? No, I think I think I think Towns would be ahead of their uh, on the big board. I think they're not so much focused in on need as much as, as talent, and I think they want to get that superstar talent. But I think Russell fills that need and also has that kind of talent. So yeah, I think he's certainly towards the top of their board. He might even be second on their board. Um, you know, he's 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 a great kid who can shoot, who can really pass, um, and like you said, fill the position of need. So I think he he fits in that. You know, it's, it's both a need for the Sixers and it's a need in terms of talent. So certainly, I think. If they end up two, three, four, you know, he's, he's clearly one of the front runners. Yeah, what is it about his game? Because he's a guy who's interesting. You know, is he a point guard? Is he a two guard? I mean, we haven't, uh, you know, we only played the one year so far, so we don't get to see a whole heck of a lot of him. You know, what do you think that Russell fits best at in the NBA? Well, I think I think he can legitimately play either. He can play off the ball. He can run him off the screens. He can shoot off the screens. Uh, you can put him in the corner and he can shoot. But I think ultimately you're going to want the ball in his hands as much. I think that's how he's going to put the most pressure on the defense. Um, you know, when he's coming off of the pick and roll, he's going to attract a lot of, of defensive attention. 
um, because of his shooting and because of his ability to make plays. So I think you're going to want the ball in his hands as much as you can. I think because of that reason, he's probably going to pay, play a lot of point guard. He might not be the most natural point guard, but he is also a very creative passer, so I don't think he's going to hurt you very much. But I, I think he's probably going to play mostly at point. Derek Bonner's in Chicago at the NBA Draft Combine. Another guy, Stanley Johnson, uh, met with the Sixers. You would assume he would be more in their range if they ended up with the double five six, or if they ended up getting that Miami Heat pick. Yeah, I wouldn't expect him to be at play in you know the top three, top four. Uh, but he's certainly a guy who, you know, if if they get that second pick, if they fall the worst case scenario at six, then he's a guy in play. I mean, he's a he's a really good defender. Can really defend three positions, two, three, and four strong, athletic, and, and can shoot. And he was really consistent shooting the ball. And he can handle the basketball a little bit and, and, and make some nice passes. I think he's going to be a really good player. Um, I think a lot of people are going to look at him, and I don't necessarily think he's going to be a first or even a second option offensively. And he's probably more like that 13 to 15 point per game guy. But with that defense and that ability to shoot, I think he's going to be a very valuable player. So it's probably why he's not being talked about much in the top five. But I think once you get past that, uh, I think he's going to be a very good value. Yeah, he's another guy, too, though, that plays very good defense. Tough guy. Can probably, you know, from what I saw of him, he looks like a guy that can maybe defend multiple positions. And those are the kind of things the Sixers like, you know, that ability to do, almost like Chip Kelly likes versatility. Guys that can do uh, multiple things. So he would be an interesting fit uh, for Philadelphia. Now, another thing would be you mentioned Winslow. Uh, you know, is he a guy, too? The Sixers have the best chance to finish one, two, or three, but if they fell out of that spot, you're starting to find those second-tier guys. Would Winslow be a guy that fits what Philadelphia likes? Yeah, I mean, he's, he's another one that he's in play at the 4-5 um, in the draft, I mean, uh, not not the position. Um, but he's another guy who shot really well, uh, especially from the catch, especially when he, was, he, he had time to set and collect himself. Uh, he shot over 40% from three, and he's an elite defender. Um, and he's another guy. They played a lot at the four. I think he's going to be more of a three in the NBA. Um, but he can he can defend multiple positions as well. Uh, and another guy who can pass the ball. He's got a little more offensive game than Stanley Johnson, uh, a little more of a dribble drive game that I think he can really grow in future years. Yeah, he's another guy who can do a lot of things on the basketball court. Uh, he's going to be a really good defender, made his shots, and I think he's going to be a really good pro. Uh, what's uh, Decker looking like out there? I know a lot of people found out about him at the uh, NCAA tournament, but uh, did, that kind of shot his name up the board. But does he look like a guy who can make it at this level? Well, I think he's going to be a valuable player. I'm not sure exactly how valuable that's going to be. Uh, the thing with um, the thing with Decker is his jump shot's always been really inconsistent. Uh, he'll go through those periods like he did in the tournament. Well, he'll, he'll go five for six from a game. He'll go a, a two- or three-game span where he looks really good shooting the ball. At the end of the year, you look down, and he's always shooting 32% from three. So I think that's going to be the biggest thing he's going to have to show, you know, during workouts, is that he can shoot, and he can shoot consistently. Um, you know, he's got a lot to like in his offensive game. He is athletic. He can defend a little bit. Uh, he can he can create off the dribble a little bit. He's a, a really creative player. Um, but to me, his, his biggest question mark is going to be that jump shot and whether or not he can be more than just a streaky shooter. Because right now, that's, that's really what he's been at three years at Wisconsin. Uh, also, Kaminsky, another guy a lot of people found out about from last year's uh, Final Four run and then this year. Is he a guy who has maybe crept up into that top ten? Well, he's certainly pushing pushing that range, uh, you know, late lottery top ten. I'm not sure I necessarily see him as much of a fit for the Sixers. Um, my biggest questions with him is, is who is he going to defend at the NBA level? Uh, you know, can he – he's not all that good of a post defender. He doesn't move his feet all that well to defend, you know, on the perimeter and rolls against, you know, face up stretch power forward. So I'm not really sure how to defend. I think that might limit the chance that he's drafted by the Sixers, but he's certainly sneaking up into the lottery and borderline top ten consideration. I mean, he's he's got you know as much skill as you could hope for in a big man offensively. It's just whether or not he can defend. Uh, I know that uh, he's not at the combine, but are you hearing anything about Przingis? You know, I was reading something today that people think he could be one of the top two players taken in this draft. Are there people that are buzzing about him? Yeah, there's there's very wide ranging opinions on Porzingis. Um, you know, he's certainly a guy with an immense amount of talent, and I think what's interesting with him is his skill set really fits with Joel Embiid. Uh, he, is, he has potential to be an elite shooter at seven foot one, um, which which is hard to find. And he's not only a guy who can shoot it, you know, station him in the corner and shoot it from a catch, but he can shoot it running off the screen. He can shoot it off the dribble, and that ability to shoot off the move is just something you don't find very much in a guy of his size. Uh, he can also block some shots, which, again, when you're talking about stretch fours or really big men who shoot the ball, you don't really find all that many of them that can block shots like he can. And he can also move his feet defensively, so he can defend the pick and roll, and I think he's really going to be 
more of a, a power forward defender than the center because of that. Um, his biggest thing, I mean, he's, he's seven foot one, 220 pounds, and that might be generous. Uh, he needs to put on significant weight to really take the, you know, the physical nature of the NBA. Um, I think that's something where playing for the Sixers might help because obviously Joel Embiid is going to be down low. He's going to be, you know, defending those kinds of guys. Uh, and also I think he's going to need to go in the right spot because I think he's, he's going to struggle at the very beginning, but I think he's going to need playing time as well. So if he goes in a place where, you know, he's buried on the bench because he's struggling defensively or he can't, he's not rebounding the ball well, I'm not sure that's necessarily the best spot for him. But, again, with the Sixers, they've obviously shown patience. Um, they've shown commitment to the young guys, to playing the young guys. That might help as well. I think he's a guy the Sixers could have a lot of interest in. Uh, he's not the safest pick in the world because, like I said, if he doesn't add, you know, pretty significant mass, he's going to struggle with the physicality of the NBA. But, I mean, he's, got, he's just got a world of potential. And, you know, this is a league where you need to be able to stretch the floor and, and you need one of those two big men who can shoot. And having him next to him be is definitely very enticing. Uh, I know this uh, quote says an NBA executive said, I would take him uh, above Jaleel Okafor. He's like a Dirk Nowitzki or a Paul Gasol. So if the Sixers had the second pick and Towns was off the board and they took Perzingis, would you be happy if you were a Sixer fan? Uh, I think two might be a little bit high. Um, you know, but I do think he's in that range, in that, that four through six range. Um, like I said, he's not the safest pick in the world, so there's some risk. And I'm always going to have my, – my excitement's going to be tempered a little bit because of that. But he has that potential to be worth that third, fourth, fifth pick in the draft. He could end up being that, you know, that third through fifth best player in this draft. It's just how much – you know, how, how, how willing are you to take that risk? Um, I think two might be a little high. I think I have his own rated definitely above him. I think I have Russell and probably Moody already above him too. But if, if you throw out Okafor because you don't necessarily think he can fit with Embiid, then he's, I mean, Porzingis is definitely a very interesting candidate. All right, uh, Derek Bodner's in Chicago at the NBA uh, Draft Combine here on 97.3 ESPN at Derek Bodner NBA. Give us a couple uh, possible names to watch in that second round. Well, the Sixers have, what, four or five second-round picks. So who are some guys uh, that fans could keep their eye on uh, because the Sixers do have so many second-round picks? Yeah, well, I, I think one of them I kind of mentioned um, – um, and George Lucas DePaula. You know, I think he's a guy that, that I think he could take as a project point guard. Um, a lot of, of you know, defensive wing types, uh, Michael Qualls, uh, J.P. Takoto uh, from UNC, I think he's got a chance. Um, I mean, there's, like I said, Rashawn Holmes, I think is, is becoming really interesting. I think Chris McCullough is a guy that, that you can keep your eye on, a guy who went to uh, Syracuse was a little inconsistent but showed a lot of potential as a, as a big man and then tore his ACL and he's now out and he won't be working out and we've seen Sam Henke you know kind of capitalize on draft stock impacted by short term fluctuations like, like an ACL injury you know I think he's a guy if he were to stay at Syracuse and gone back he could have been a mid you know mid first mid to late first round pick so to get him in the second round I think could be value even if the Sixers don't necessarily need that big man so those are kind of some of the names that I would I would focus on. All right, the uh, NBA Draft Lottery on Tuesday night, the NBA Draft on the 25th, and uh, we'll be all over both. And uh, Derek Bodner uh, with more on 97.3 ESPN.com and at Derek Bodner NBA at the NBA Draft Combine. Uh, Joel Embiid's out there. Any, uh, did you get a chance to run into him at all? Uh, he is out here. I have seen him. I didn't get a chance to talk to him. Um, the Sixers have an enormous contingent out here from – Brett Brown and Embiid and, and, and to obviously Sam Hinkie, uh, Ben Falk, and a lot of the front office guys. There's a big contingent here, and, and, and Joel is, is certainly among that. Um, you know, he's in the, the interview room asking questions of the candidates. Um, I think he's more of an icebreaker than anything else, to be honest. Uh, you know, having a peer with them, I think, might calm some of these, these kids down during the interview process. I mean, one of the questions he asked, Miles Turner, uh, a Texas big man, was why didn't you go to Kansas? Uh, so I don't think he's necessarily <laughs> asking the hard-hitting questions, but I think he's there to kind of, you know, loosen up the atmosphere a little bit. Well, it's good to see him involved in doing things, and uh, I guess still he's on pace. When is that summer league? When does the summer league start? Uh, early July. I'm not sure the exact date, but it would be like the first or second week in July. Yeah, obviously, right after the draft, they usually get those guys going. and uh, We can't wait to see what Embiid looks like on the floor, and uh, we'll see who his new teammates are coming up on June 25th. Derek? Enjoy Chicago, man. Yep, thank you.